This is the video where we are going to discuss GPT-4 vision prompt engineering techniques. At this point, there are not a lot of tutorials on GPT-4 vision prompt engineering techniques, but Microsoft recently put together a very detailed paper on GPT-4 vision that's called the dawn of the LMMs, the large multimodal models. From that paper, there is a particular segment that discusses about prompt engineering techniques, which we are going to go over in this video. There are going to be four different kinds of prompt engineering techniques. The first one is called following text instructions. The second one is called visual pointing or visual referral prompting. And then the third one is called few short in prompt learning or in context learning. And then the final one, fourth one is the visual plus text, the combination of both. And we are going to discuss all these four with the examples that Microsoft has given us in this paper. Let's get started. The first one, you can see that it says following text instructions. Imagine you have got an image like this. Once you upload the image, you can say describe the image with a sentence consisting of three or six or nine words. So when you do like this, it is going to give you three. That's the answer for three, six, six for six and nine for nine. So once you upload the image and prompt this and GPT-4 vision is going to give you all these three outputs. So you can see how it follows the text, the instruction that has been given very diligently with the three words, the three words, the six words, and then the nine words. This is quite helpful if you're especially writing like a more marketing copy or like a copywriting item. So this is super helpful. The next one is you can say, write a sentence for the image consisting only the words starting with letter B, D and T. You can see it starts with B, the beach side bar boasts beautiful blue backdrop. D, dining deck displays delightful drinks, distant docks. T, tabletop terrace, teeming with tropical tranquility. So it's really, really good. But on the other hand, if you want to go ahead and then see what would the missing image look like? And then you can see that you have got like a diamond here and like a star here and with a dot. And it says the missing image would likely be a variation of the diamond or a star shape as seen in other three images. It could be a diamond with a different pattern or color and a star with different. It is difficult to say for sure without more context, but it would likely follow the same theme or other images. So you did not get the answer. So you just simply uploaded the image and said, what would the missing image look like? And you did not get the answer. So now you can go ahead and then add the details to the prompt. Here are the three sub images arranged in a two by two matrix. The first look at the two images in the first column in the top left and the bottom left then find out the pattern in the first column based on the left two images. Next, use the found pattern and the image on the top right to infer the missing figure. Finally, describe what would the missing image look like. Once you add these details, you can see that it manages to give you the answer saying, therefore, the missing image in the bottom right would be a star with the dot in the center, similar to the image on the top right, but with a dot in the center. So this is just with simply a prompt with instructions, how does it follow the instruction? And the next one is following instruction is one of the things that people love to do is get a structured response back from GPT-4 vision or even GPT-4 for that matter or any LLMs. So you give an input and you get an output in a structured format. And in this case, it says JSON format. Please read the text in the image, return the following information in JSON format. And you can see that it has the format has been given as part of the prompt and this is the input. The most important thing is to give it a structure that will give you the exact structure as response. So when you gave the structure, you can see that it gave you D, it gave you all the other informations. And in fact, you go ahead one step further and then say put NA instead when the information is not available in the end from the image. So that will help you get consistent output for all the images. For example, let's say you've got 10 images and you want to get all the 10 images into a structured output. At this point, you do not have an API access. So still you can get it by having the same prompt with the same input JSON format for which GPT-4 is going to fill you the data and give you the data as an output. So you can just add further information in it and then you can get the information. The next one part of the following text instruction is 
you can just simply say count the number of apples in the image. So it's going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. But still it says 12 images. And that's where we have got a very classical chain of thought. And we are going to say, let's take think step by step. And it gives you the same output. So you said step by step, it counted the same one. Now you can go ahead and then add more instruction to it. So instead of simply saying, let's think step by step, you can say, let's count the apples row by row. So it's going to count row by row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 8 plus 3 is 11. So you can see once you say that it is saying, okay, the first row has got four apples. The second row has got three apples that the third row has got four apples. Despite the answer being correct, you can see that the way it approached is wrong. So you can change the prompt. Count the number of apples in the image. First count how many rows of apples are there. Then count the apples in each row and finally sum them up together to get the total number. So first you're saying count simply the number of rows, then count each apple in each row and then sum them up together. And it does it, but it does a mistake here. You can see now you're going to add the traditional you are an expert thing. You are an expert in counting things in the image. Let's count the number of apples in the image below row by row to be sure we have the right answer. First, you're going to say four and it's going to be four. It's going to be three. Total number of images in the apples, 11 apples. Finally, we arrived at the solution. The reason why they have gone through step by step is for us to understand what is happening, and how you can steer the prompt instructions so that you can get the right output. And with this, we are going to go into the next section which is going to be the visual pointing. What is visual prompting or visual pointing, visual referring prompting? Human beings have a traditional way of pointing out something or talking about something. For example, if I were to tell you, hey, look up, I would just like point up like this. And if I were to tell you, hey, uh, look at look at this, then I would probably say, look at this like this. So we have a habit of, you know, either marking something like showing something and then asking, um, like talking to fellow humans. So what visual pointing and visual referring prompting talks about is exactly the same thing. So you can just point out something like, for example, you can have this arrow, the box, like mark something like circle something, hand drawing, and you can have all these things and ask it to give you a response back. Like, how does it work? You can upload an image and then say, describe the pointed region in the image. So first GPT-4 vision understands what is a pointed region. And then it starts explaining you what is there in the highlighted region. So it says, okay, the pointed region in the image is a row of hanging lights on a wire. And the next thing that you can do is you can upload like a table here and then you can say, describe the pointed region in the image. It's a very simple prompt. If you see the prompt, all you're saying is describe the pointed region in the image, but just because you're pointing it, it actually understand that is what you're interested in. The highlighted red region in the image is a table cell that contains numerical value. You can see it talks about all these details. The next thing is you can have multiple annotations in an image. What is in the circled glass, object one or object two? Describe what is object one, object two, then check what is in the circled glass. You can see this is object one and you have said this is object two and you're saying this is the circled image. So it has to figure out what is in the object one, what is in the object two and what is inside the glass, whether it is object one or object two and it does the job of explaining what is inside it. The next one is answer the questions in the following figure, provide immediate steps. Okay. You have got like a right angle triangle, I guess. Yeah. How long this is the edge and what is the angle here? And it goes on calculating the entire details. So what is happening here? You're uploading an image and you are giving it like with an annotation or like pointing and then asking it to figure out what is it. It's very powerful, especially if you think about like how you can use this as something and then use it for like help, like visually challenge people. The next one is visual and text prompting, which is going to be combination of both. For example, you can say, find out the pattern in the first column and use it to infer the missing figure in the second column. So it's going, it has like a combination of pointing, but also the text prompting, like the instructions that we gave at first. So you can see it goes on with the details. So this is something that we figured out from the first section that we learned. And then you can see that it, um, it, it just like with the image that it knows what to do. And you also like give extra information and it figures out the final answer for you. 
and the same way you can again go ahead and then say okay find out the pattern in the first column use it to infer the missing figure in the second column and you can just give more text and give the details here and then give everything in there and then it figures out the answer so one thing that not a lot of people have uh, realized is that with gpt4 vision you can upload more than one image and the image can also have text and instructions so this is what has happening here like for example you have got the image but you also have got the text as part of the image in and itself so it helps the gpt4 vision to figure out what you want and the final section is the in context few shot learning it has two things one is the in context learning and then the few shot learning it's quite detailed so i'll link the paper for you to go through it but the main idea here is that when you upload the image instead of giving a simple prompt like this which ideally you know it will not give you the right answer because you know sometimes it get confused with a lot of things available here what is the read of the speed meter so it says approximately 22 miles per hour which is not true because you can see the speed meter does not go above 22 how do you figure out as a human being okay as a human being what i do first first i look at the speedometer then i try to look at where the where the you know the tick is or the the yellow color thing is and then i try to point out like figure out where it is and it doesn't have a reading so i try to figure out where the next reading is and then i try to say okay this is in between like exactly in the middle of 0 and 20 so it's probably like 10 miles per hour so that's what like 10 or slightly lesser than 10 this is how a human being would figure out so what now we have to do is we have to embed this information as part of the in context few shot learning so from the prompt and in itself with the few shot examples that we give it can learn so how do we do it so let's go to the final the most correct accurate answer and then we figure out how they have managed to do it so first you said what is the read of the speed meter so the yellow pointer is roughly at the middle between 80 and 100 uh, mpg mph like miles per hour the middle between 80 and 100 is 90 the speed is around 91 mph as the pointer just passing 90 mph miles per hour so the yellow needle is roughly at the middle between 20 and 40 the middle between 20 and 40 is 30 and the speed is around 29 and as the needle is closer to 30 miles per hour but not quite 38 now you have given the prompt which is for the in context learning and you have given the few short examples and with that example what you are doing is in fact it is the two short example with a few short you've got one and you have got two and with that you are going to give this information and then say once you ask what is the read of the speed meter it is going to tell you the yellow pointer is at the long tick between 0 to 20 the long tick at the middle is long tick at the middle between 0 to 20 is 10 the speed is around 9 mph 9 miles per hour as a pointer is closer to 10 but not quite 10 and that is exactly the right answer so the point here is that when you uh, when you want to complicate or when you have like a complex image and you want to prompt them you need to give examples you need to give the enough context within within the prompt in itself for gpt4 vision to learn like have that in context learning and also use the few short examples that you have given and then give you the final answer you have got one more example where you have got an upload an image the image is a chart and you can see like the peak is here in june and uh, if you see the peak june it's june 2022 but it always messes up this this value always messes up you can see it says 3.32 and there are a lot of different steps and you can see the 3.32 coming again and again until the final one where you have the same in context few shot which is the two shot here so you uploaded the graph and then said in the graph which year has the highest average gas price for the month of june so you can see for the month of june the highest price is somewhere in 2018 so you can see here in this particular graph and then you give more details about how, what all the elements that are available in the graph and then you give another examples about what all the elements are in the graph and then finally it says hence the year with the highest average gas price for the month of june is 2022 so it manages to find out the right answer for you so in this video we learned four techniques from the microsoft paper the first technique is few the text instructions like how do you give the text instruction how do you steer the model in such a way that it gives you the answer the second one is visual pointing or visual referral pro prompting where you annotate and point in the image and then it tries to figure out the third one is 
visual plus text prompting where you can have text as part of the image you can give the image and then upload the image also the final one is the in context few shot learning one shot or two shot examples we have seen some examples where two shot few shot example works fine so where you upload one image one like prompt and then you upload two examples and explain what is the question and how do you arrive at the answer and then finally when you upload your particular image for the question that you uploaded it is going to figure out the answer so this is the few four different prompt engineering techniques that we have learned from this paper for gpt4 vision which is a multi-model model if you have got any question let me know in the comment section happy to listen to you and then share my feedback with you see you in another video happy prompting